Um, that's original is joint work with Radu Lazo. Um, so let's recall the um, basic setup of uh, Kornishi, that if M is a compact complex manifold, then um, the complex structures on M are controlled by um, by the Kornishi map, which you can think of as a holomorphic map psi from um, a derm of the origin around um, a derm around zero of H1 of the tangent bundle to derm um, in H2. And so psi inverse of zero is a set of complex structures, at least locally near a given complex structure. And of course, the best case is. Um, I is identically zero, in which case we say the deformations of M are unobstructed. And so, for example, if H2 of TM is equal to zero, then that's automatic. But there are many interesting cases when that's um, uh, not the case, but where the deformations are still unobstructed. So uh, let me give two of the main examples. First of all, if M is Fano, that means that KM inverse is ample. And um, H2 of the tangent bundle of M is equal to H2 of M minus one M tensor KM inverse. And now this just you can think of as an uh, the inverse of an ample vector bundle by so by uh, Akizuko Akizuki Nakano, that implies that H2 of M is equal to zero. And the other main case is um, where M is Kalabi Yao. And so we've learned that in the lectures of Claire on Tuesday. So here K of M is trivial and usually H2 PM is not zero, but the uh, bogomolov Pian todorov theorem implies that death M is unobstructed. Okay, so, um, What I want to do is talk about um, singular versions of this. So what happens in the singular case? So now Y is going to be a compact analytic variety or maybe a, um, a, a Objective variety. And then the deformation theory of Y is governed by, by an object which is formally similar to that one. It's governed by uh, P1Y, which is X1 of the Kähler differentials. This is a global X group. And now there's a, this is the uh, tangent space to, to moduli to deformations Y. And then there's again a Koronishi map the T2 of Y. And of course, again, we want to look at cases like by identically zero. So this would be the case where Deformations of Y are unobstructed. 
So um, we're looking for cases where that's satisfied. Okay, now, um, Um, these X groups look a little mysterious, but in fact, um, you can analyze them in a lot of detail. In particular, there's a, there's a local version the PI of Y, which is the sheep X. And these are pretty straightforward to understand. So for example, um, if uh, Y is a uh, hypersurface singularity defined by F equals zero, then T one of OY of Y, sorry, is OY uh, mod, well, let's say sitting inside of, um, Um, CN plus one is a germ, say, then um, T1 of Y at the origin is just uh, O CN plus one, it's zero modulo the uh, ideal generated by F and its partial derivatives. And so it's a com completely computable object. And similarly for local cleaner intersection singularities, this is easy to write down. And there's a uh, an, a long exact sequence. So let's assume for simplicity, um, uh, local complete intersection, that stands for local complete intersection, plus isolated, although you don't really need those. And then there's an exact sequence. So T naught of Y, the case I equals zero, this is the tangent chief, the chief of derivations. And then here, exact sequence goes on to two, not a Y. And then by my assumptions, you just put a zero here. So um, the terms have meaning. This means the deformations of Y where you keep all the singularities, at least locally. And this measures the change in the, um, the singularities as you um, locally as you deform y. And um, so notice that um, in this game, there's kind of two issues, sort of um, something that we don't really see in the uh, case of um, in the case of a smooth manifold. Um, when we want to um, smooth y, There are two issues. First of all, unobstructedness. But second of all, this map doesn't have to be surjective. And so um, if you want to, uh, and in, in many interesting cases, not surjective. So you need to find first order moving directions. T1 of Y. And these are kind of separate issues. Okay, so um, now I want to make some assumptions. On Y. Um, first of all, I want to assume local complete intersection singularities. Um, that's a very natural assumption to make. And in particular, that implies um, that Y is so-called Gornstein, which just means that it's dualizing sheaf is a line bucket. 
Um, and it, it also means that the local deformations are unobstructed, so I, I won't have to worry about those. And second of all, um, something that's natural in the point of view of moduli is I want to assume uh, canonical singularities, which um, for, for many points of view are the appropriate singularities to use when you're trying to compactify moduli. And um, so canonical plus Gorenstein is equivalent to rational plus Gorenstein. And rational just means, um, so the notation I always use is that if, if pi from y hat to y is a good resolution of singularities, so good means log or simple normal crossings. Um, and E will always be the um, exceptional divisor. It means that a simple normal crossings. Then um, rational means that Ri pi lower star over y hat is equal to zero for i bigger than zero. So again, it's a fairly easy um, condition to work with. Okay, um, so. With this setup, I'm going to consider the following um, cases. I'm going to assume with these assumptions. I right, define why is a canonical final variety if omega y inverse is ample and it's a canonical Bobby Yaw variety if omega y is trivial. And here I want to put in something and y is projective, or basically, I'm going to need some kind of strong form of the DD bar I'm going to hold. And um, that's actually complicated to state, especially if y has worse than isolated singularity. So I'm just going to assume something like this whenever I need it. But you can always just take y to be, be projective. OK. So um, I want to study those two cases. And now in dimension two, um, what does that mean? So canonical um, uh, well, Gorenstein rational Gorenstein the same as a rational double point. Those are the um, singularities of type A, N, D, N, E67, and E8. And uh, so here, if Y hat is a minimal resolution, then um, y hat is a, a generalized del pezzo. Uh, if, if y is fano, that just means minus ky hat is nothing big. And uh, y hat is a k3 surface. If y is probably. So these are certainly familiar things to look at. And now uh, the deformations of these go back to um, um, as far as I know, Burns Wall and maybe even earlier. A theorem well, well. Um, that y is smoothable. In fact, in a strong sense, that the deformations of y are um, realize all small deformations of the singular points. 
which are hypersurface singularities, and so they're automatically excludable. Um, and that really can hold in higher dimensions. Well, let me just sort of survey some of the results. So in dimension three, um, we have a theorem that I proved in 1986. Um, if, if Y is Fano with only ordinary double points, ordinary double points, and also is a sort of annoying technical hypothesis that um, you could probably get rid of, then, um, then, then why is smoothable? And um, if uh, y is Calabi Yao, ordinary double points, um, and sort of a kind of harmless assumption is this, then as we saw in Sebastian's talk, um, if we let CI be the exceptional curve at the i ordinary double point, then, um, then following, this is really following an idea of, of Clemens, then um, Y has a first order smoothing if and only if there exists a relation in H2 of, this is a, a small resolution where you uh, replace the points by exceptional curves of the form summation AI times the class of the CI is equal to zero and the AI are not equal to zero for all. And um, this restriction to first order smoothings actually turns out not to be necessary because of uh, a theorem, following theorem. Do independently to Kalamata on nineteen ninety-two. That says if if y is a uh, labial in any dimension with ordinary double points, then um, definitions of y are unobstructed. But notice that doesn't really tell you whether or not you can find smoothing directions. Um, so then in the 90s, uh, there was a lot of work uh, due to Namikawa and then also doing work with Namikawa and Steenberg. And that's again, just in a special case where the dimension of y is equal to three. So for example, the theorem of Kamakawa in 1994, which says that if y is a canonical CRI threefold with isolated local computer section singularities, and this is sort of a natural condition which is too much more super now on, a sort of y is equal to zero, then definitions of y are unobstructed. And this result really, certainly its proof seems quite special to dimension three. Okay, so uh, then in terms of actual smoothings, Um, you start with a Calabiao case. So in, in all of what follows, I'm going to assume um, isolated 
hypersurface singularities. Um, at least for the dimension three part. So it's a theorem of Nam and Cowan Steenbrink around 1995, which says that um, uh, Y can, so Y has canonical, and, I'm, and these are all gonna have this condition too, so I might as well write it here. Um, if uh, Y can be deformed, to um, um, Clavial threefold with only ordinary double points. Um, and then Nanakawa, uh, well, it appeared in 2002, but I think the work was done much sooner. Is if, if Y has uh, just terminal singularities, um, then, um, and, there's a condition, so, so the condition is to um, so let, let y prime y be a resolution at the ordinary double points and ci the small resolution and ci the exceptional curves, um, then uh, y is smoothable if and only if there exists a relation in um, H2 of Y prime again with the AI not equal to for all I. And then, um, now we're talking about 1997, which says if Y is Fano with isolated hypersurface singularities, this one's automatic um, and terminal, then, um, then Y is smooth. So that eliminates, I don't have any more, but the theorem I had before had this annoying hypothesis that there was a smooth anti-canonical divisor and this doesn't use that. So let me note already back in, in my result, but also here, you see one distinction between the Fano and the Calabi-Yau case. In the Fano case, there's no topological condition. In the Calabi-Yau case, you need a topological condition, but just at the ordinary double points. Okay, so um, let me try to begin to explain the work with Laza. You can sharpen this as follows. Um, first of all, in the first theorem, um, we can and smooth all non-ordinary double points. So the uh, Namakawa Steenbrink theorem doesn't tell you what happens at those, but in fact, you can show that you can smooth directly all the non-ordinary double points. And um, secondly, in the second theorem Namakawa, you can replace terminal by canonical. So what that means is if you have a canonical Clabi Eli threefold, you can smooth it module this condition, which only holds for the ordinary double points. And then also in three, you can replace terminal by canonical, but unfortunately, and under this assumption that um, um, the dualizing chief is O of minus H for a smooth divisor. Now, I think this is kind of a technical point, and I think you could probably at least get Namakawa's theorem where H is only have mild singularities, but it just means that we are so only looking at this rather provisionally at the moment. Okay, so. Uh, 
So what I'd like to do is um, explain to some extent how you prove these theorems, but um, we really um, how you should understand them and how you should generalize them to higher dimensions. So uh, to do that, I want to look at the local picture. So here, X is just going to be a germ of, of a singularity. And you can work complex analytically. And again, I'll denote by um, uh, a log resolution by half X. And now, um, and uh, E is the divisor and you will be well you can think of it as x minus zero or x hat minus e and um since we understand the dimension two picture completely let me assume that dimension is at least three and in particular that implies by a result which essentially goes back to schlesinger that um h naught of p one x is um, H1 of, well, you can put T naught of X, you can put the tangent bundle of X hat and restrict it to you. Okay. So uh, before I say any more about this, let me just sort of give a brief taxonomy of, um, of uh, canonical singularities. Well, it's not really going to be a taxonomy. Um, let me just say that um, if you were to start thinking about canonical singularities, you could sort of think about them in very special cases. So these are just some examples. First example is singularities with a small resolution. For example, if you look at the A2n minus one singularity, um, C1 squared plus C2 squared plus C3 squared plus C4 is a 2n equals zero. Then this has a small resolution. Um, with exceptional curve C and the normal bundle is OP1, C is isomorphic to P1 and the normal bundle is OP1 plus OP1 of minus two, if n is bigger than one. For n equals one, you just get the ordinary double point with normal bundle O minus one plus O minus one. Now, this has only happened in dimension three. If you're looking at um, hypersurface or more generally local computer section singularities, this is a special phenomenon only happens in dimension three. But you could sort of look at a natural sort of generalization, which is maybe crepent resolutions. Here, um, the canonical bundle is sort of locally trivial around the exceptional divisor. And there are many more of these in, in every dimension. So for example, um, the, the affine cone, cone over a uh, smooth hypersurface. Uh, degree n, degree n in Pn cone over a conic, that's an ordinary double point, but you take the cone over a cubic surface in P3, that's an example of the Krepin singularity in, in any dimension. Uh, but most canonical singularities, even hypersense, are not Krepin. Okay, so um, 
one thing you want to do is um, you'd like to look at uh, sort of try to take T1 and sort of somewhat, of course, we can write it down algebraically, but we'd like to understand T1 better and try to find natural pieces of it. So thinking of T1, H not a T1, as H1 of U, Px hat restricted to U, well, you could look at the image of H1 of X hat, Px hat in here. Let's take something which you find all X hat and restrict it to U. And these correspond to um, deformations of X hat. This is just a local object. Um, this you can think of as sort of the local simultaneous resolution. So you could, this is one where you can take the resolution and you can deform the resolution. Now, unfortunately, except in, in the non crappen case, Uh, this is not, or, or it's image, it's image is it, not birationally invariant. And we, we look for uh, things that don't depend on the choice of resolution. So you could think about what can you cook up. And when you look for things that are birational invariants, it's better to work with uh, forms than the tangent bundle. So you could look at um, so here, um, these objects are kind of familiar to people who study Hodge theory. So I look at so omega n minus one. So I could look at omega n minus one log e. So these have log poles along e twisted by minus e. Here I could just use forms and here I could put an h1 minus one cat block. Okay. And now um, it turns out that these extreme ones are birationally invariant, but this one is not. So um, nonetheless, we could look at the image inside of uh, H naught of T one of X So look at, at the images inside um, H1 of U, H1 of U, which is H naught U1X. And then it turns out that um, the image of H1 of omega n minus one X hat, so the most geometric one is equal to the image of H1 of minus one x hat log e minus e. So even though this group isn't necessarily birationally invariant, each image inside of T1 is. Now, um, the next idea is we'd actually like to work modulo this image. And the reason for that is the following. If you think about the global case, why is it called the uh, threefold? And um, it's, it's local singularity is an A2N minus one singularity. So, that locally looks like this curve C, which has normal bundle O plus O of minus two. And now the image of this is going to be the locus where that splits up into a bunch of minus one, minus one curves. And this is a very hard problem. So this is connected. So can we, can we deform 
the resolution of y, so c splits up into into minus one minus one thirds. And this is sort of generally connected with the Clemens conjecture, which is not known. And so in general, that image seems hard to control. And this one seems equally hard. So the idea is simply to forget about it and work modulo that image. Okay. So, um, So th there'll be a piece of the deformation theory we can control, we, which we cannot control, and it's geometrically interesting. But um, the good news is that what's left over is going to have smoothing dimensions. Okay. So um, I define uh, A to be um, an X mod, the image of each one. Of Get minus one of x hat. Um, and then uh, by kind of standard results, banishing whatever for local singularities, you prove the following theorem. First of all, um, there exists an exact sequence. Here it goes to get okay, minus one x hat of u minus e into h not of t1 of x. This is really just definition plus the fact this map is injective, but uh, K, and these come out of sort of standard local cohomology sequences, is isomorphic to H2E local cohomology. This one X hat minus E, and it's also isomorphic to the kernel of E local cohomology into regular cohomology. Um, and secondly, there exists an exact sequence. Zero goes to um, write it down and then explain it. Uh, okay, so um, I have to tell you what. Gur fn minus one of L is so here. Um, so, so here L is the link. In terms of homotopy, it's the same as x minus the singular point, x hat minus e, and it carries a natural mixed Hodge structure, and that means take the um, n minus first graded piece with respect to the Hodge. Structure. Okay, so um, if we want to have anything to play around with, um, if we're working modulo um, the image of uh, H1 of omega and minus x hat, we need K not equal to zero. And it turns out uh, that K by local duality is dual to Hn minus two omega one x hat. And of course, even better would be if this term wasn't zero that appears in K, and that also in, in this interpretation in terms of local duality. Um, this is dual to Hn minus two uh, omega one x hat log e. Minus e. So um, we'd like these to be non zero. And now the point is. That these relate to other aspects of singularity theory that have been studied fairly recently. And I want to explain now. 
So, um, following definition. So I'm just gonna state it for um, isolated local computer sections. So here let's assume X is an isolated local computer section. The following definition, which is due on the one hand to Saito and his co-authors and also to Mustaza and Popa, also some of their co-authors, that a singularity is um, K Dubois if R cube pi lower star omega P X hat foggy minus C is equal to zero to all P less than equal to K and all Q greater than zero. And then there's a sort of companion notion due to Kerr and Laza which says that the singularity is K rational if R cube pi lower star make the X hat log E equal zero for the same And now let me make some comments about this definition, which maybe seems a little, first of all, it's obviously got to be by rational invariant. So notice that zero rational, you're just looking at P equals zero, this is O. So zero rational is the same as rational. And uh, zero Dubois, this was introduced by Steenbrink, just under the name of Dubois. And these arose in the study of things like insignificant limit singularities and sort of questions connected with degenerations of surfaces and higher dimensional objects. And um, again, it looks sort of mysterious, but let me sort of try to convince you that it's actually pretty computable in a lot of examples. Um, the, the idea is that um, both K rational and K Dubois essentially are saying the singularities are better than rational. So as K increases, the singularity is not only rational, but it becomes more and more rational. And then at some point it becomes an ordinary double point. And after that, it becomes smooth. So about half the dimension, um, either one of these concepts means it has to be an ordinary double point. And then bigger than that means that it's smooth. So um, K rational, K Dubois are both um, ways to talk about singularities that are better than rational singularities. And there's also a chain of implications. So K rational implies K Dubois and K Dubois implies K minus one. So um, let me give some more explicit examples. Um, so let's look at um, a, a weighted homogeneous singularity, summation of i equals one to n plus one uh, zi, the di equals zero. So it's like a Fermat hyperservice, but you can have different weights. And of course, I assume that, that I'm on a singular point. Then um, x is k Dubois. If and only if the summation of the i is bigger than equal to k plus one, and x is k rational. If and only if the sum is greater than k plus one. And um, one reason that they appear in sort of implicit form in dimension three. Um, so Namakawa and Steenberg prove. In the hypersurface case, uh, no singularity is um, one Dubois, sorry, one, ra one rational. And the only 
one Dubois singularity is the ordinary dot. Okay, so um, now in my zeal to use the boards correctly, of course I messed up, but let me, let me sort of explain how that's relevant to our problems. So unfortunately I erased the definition of K and the exact sequence that um, controls it. But um, for those of you who are taking notes or have long memories, um, I had this um, quotient of H naught of T1. So K and K is not equal to zero if and only if um, the singularity is not one raster. I had expressed this in terms of a single cohomology group involving omega n minus one um, and um, du dually it, it works out to this. And in the, the, the long exact sequence for L into whatever it was. Zero, we see that this group is not zero if and only if um, X is not one to one. So that's how these groups appear in our problem. Okay, and maybe I should say one more thing, which I didn't really say there. So the, the definition of um, K rational, K Dubois came sort of out of a hat, but K Dubois is connected with the filter Duram complex. Um, complex of um, maybe Colleen. It was first really written down by Dubois and that's where the singularities come from. So this, is, this exists in the filter derived category. It's not really a single complex, but it's an object in the derived category. And roughly speaking, what you, uh, K Dubois means that is a natural map from the KO differentials to the um, piece graded piece. This is just a complex. It's a graded, associated graded, associated to the filtration here. Um, this is equivalent to saying this is an isomorphism for all P less than or equal to K. And that's where the kind of heavy guns of Hodge theory really come in. Okay, so um, so now let me go back to the specific case of deformation theory and um, try and articulate a general principle. Um, going back to our original discussion of smoothings of singularities, In sort of two issues. So first of all, one Dubois is good for unobstructedness. But um, not one rational is good to find smoothing rate. So these conditions go in opposite directions and it's kind of hard to find common ground, but we make a definition that X is one liminal if it is one Dubois, but not one rat. And um, if you go back to these exact, there it is right there, that's if and only if K is in fact isomorphic to for N minus one F h n of l and a special thing happens in this case essentially by a theorem of Saito this has dimension one 
So I can write this as C times some generator X. Okay, so um, that's the setup. Now let me sort of try to finally give some theorems in higher dimensions. So here, um, so I go back to why, um, I mean, because why is a canonical Fano, I might as well assume mention why it's at least three. And I assume local complete intersection one Dubois singularities. I don't actually have to assume They're isolated, then um, in fact, P2 of Y is equal to zero, so Y is unobstructed. And this is actually very easy. Once you set it up this way, this is just a consequence of the generalized uh, Akazuki Hano theorem, which is due to, I'm not gonna write their names up, to Guillen, um, Pascal, uh, Navarro is not Pascal Gainza and Puerta, um, who have a version of vanishing which uses the filter Dubois complex. And then the second, um, we just posted this yesterday. Uh, if Y is canonical, Yao, again, on the same assumptions, And def y is unobstructed. And again, it sort of follows the lines that Kalmata used. And if you sort of follow along what Claire did and just kind of transpose it correctly, you can make a proof that's based on very similar arguments. Okay. So um, this is a very general result, but of course, it tells you nothing about smoothing directions. So um, let me conclude with something about something about smoothing directions. And um, for simplicity, I'm just going to consider the one liminal case, which is the intersection of one Dubois and not one rational, um, just so that we don't really, I mean, th there are more general results that are a little technical. So again, let me make some assumptions that are going to hold true in both cases. I assume here that Y is uh, um, isolated hypersurface singularities. And uh, all, all singularities are one Dubois. Okay. And in fact, I assume they're one liminal. So that's the intersection of one Dubois and not one rational. And so the theorem is if uh, Y is Fano, then Y is smoothable. Um, and secondly, in the Calabi Yao case, uh, sorry, but here I need some technical assumptions. Again, I have this annoying and also there's a topological assumption um, yeah I, I think these you know this is really a sort of get the game going and I think these can be relaxed um if y is Kabi Yao um, and h1 of oy is equal to zero then there's a topological condition so um let um the singular points uh, be the xi. And um, for each one, we have uh, the link for n minus one f of li, which, uh, sorry, hn. 
which I can write as T times epsilon i. And if um, it's a natural map from um, a tan of the link into, um, so let me write this as sum of the links of the singular points, h n plus one of y hat. So here I'll set y hat be a resolution. Okay. And now if there exists a relation, which is the exact analog of the one I had for threefolds, summation ai epsilon i goes to zero in h n plus one of, of y hat, the air not equal to zero for all i, uh, then y is smooth. So in, in that sense, so um, one liminal singularities are um, really much more varied and complicated than ordinary double points. They behave um, in a very similar way. And then it's of the last minute, I just want to make one comment here, which is, um, that it's sort of odd that our results only apply to somewhat complicated singularities. They don't apply to the simplest uh, singularities which are ordinary double points. So um, it's a sort of curious situation that we can only say something about deformations when the singularity is sort of somewhat complicated. Um, and in this connection, I wanna mention work of Berlenska and Thomas from 2009, where they consider ordinary double points in um, odd, odd dimension greater than equal to three. And they find uh, a necessary condition for first order smoothings, of course, by the Kalamata uh, Ron Tian theorem. That's the same as a smoothing, but it's a it's a kind of nonlinear condition on on h naught of t one, and I think this um, you know I would like to understand this condition better, and somehow it suggests that there's a viewpoint that will incorporate uh, for things that are more complicated than one Dubois that will sort of incorporate their point of view with the point of view that I've tried to describe. Okay, so thank you very much. Are there any are there any questions? So maybe I can ask. So in dimension three, and uh, I think maybe you said this, but in dimension three, the only one liminal singularities are ODPs. Or yes. Okay. Right. But there, the point is, in dimension three, we have Namakawa's result. Right. So we're able to deal with unobstructedness uh, for a much broader class of singularities. What are the higher dimensions corresponding to ordinary double points? The, well, I mean, so of course, ordinary double points, but also these one liminal singularities, which for example, um, in the weighted homogeneous case, that would be, um, the condition summation one over di is equal to two. So roughly speaking, if they were all the same, it would be kind of half the dimension of the space, okay? But unlike ordinary double points, they have moduli and they can certainly deform to things that are not weighted homogeneous as well. And they sort of come in more than one family. So it's a, it's a much bigger class in some sense. There's a question in the chat and it says, uh, well, maybe you can read it here, but Kolar and Kovach showed that for families with Dubois singularities, the cohomology sheaves of the relative dualizing complex are flat and commute with base change. Is there something strengthening if this, is there some strengthening of this, of this if you have K Dubois? Yes, so that's the, that's the preprint that we just posted. And um, that says that, but under the assumption of local complete intersection, the, um, the, the same theorem is true for the uh, Kaler, uh, she relative Kaler p forms for p less than or equal to k. And indeed, that's how we prove the unobstructedness theorem. Is there any, any other questions?
So now the results, meaning sometimes you've used like local completed section, sometimes you've used hyper surface. What's the problem? Well, um, local completed section is very well behaved from many points of view. Um, both topologically and in terms of deformation theory. But why we have to specialize to hypersurface in the end is that in the hypersurface case, something special happens, which is that this is a cyclic. That, that's a special ingredient for hypersurfaces. It's not true for general complete intersection. Okay? And, and that's why in the end, um, I mean, Namakawa and Seenberg had to also make the same assumption, and um, I don't actually have an idea of how to proceed past hypersurface because of this. Oh, another question. Yep. Um, do you think P level for higher is so useful, or is it just like for cases? I think it's going. They're all going to be very useful. I think that these ideas have just as have been introduced by Saito and um, Ustatsa Popa, and I think that in fact. Um, you know, this is a very interesting class of singularities where you, so, you know, already um, for K rational and uh, K Dubois, sort of topological properties of the smoothing, smoothing sort of, you know, things you can prove those. And I think, um, yeah, so, so K liminal, you know, the obvious uh, generalization, it's not clear what it means, but I think these are all going to have some kind of meaning. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's uh, thank Professor Friedman again. So let me end by uh, just saying thank you to all the speakers uh, for coming. It's been a very nice week. Um, to Maureen and Elena, the CMSA, who without whom uh, we would be meeting in a field across the street. Um, uh, they were incredibly helpful and made my job uh, much easier. So thanks to them. And thank you to all, to all of you for coming. Uh, I, I hope, uh, hope it's been a, an enjoyable week. So thanks very much.